Good morning. It's Matt here with Zip or Fly, and as you can tell, I'm not in front of the airplane. I'm in my truck. What am I doing in my truck? Well, you've, if you saw one of my earlier videos, I talked about the plans for restoring and doing some work on the airplane. I, the main concern is my wings. My wings need to be recovered. And originally, last summer, I was going to take my wings, uh, the whole airplane, send it to my mechanic. He was going to keep it down for six months or so and do a lot of the fabric work. His schedule was not really up to recovering my wings, so I ended up getting my airplane back and going to Plan B. Plan B was to find a set of wings that was already recovered. So after about six, seven months, here we are in January of 2023, and I found a set of wings. Uh, the wings that I found are actually Wag Aero. They're brand new, built, uh, purpose built for a J3 project. The project never got completed. So I ended up getting these wings at a very good price. Uh, I got them at a price basically that it would cost to recover them. So the wings are kind of being thrown in for free. I called around the last few months about looking for a place to take my wings off and put them on the truck and go get them recovered. I was getting quotes from probably around 10,000 to 15, 16,000 depending upon what work they might have needed. So for just less than 10,000 I'm getting brand new wings. They've already been covered in Stitz polyfiber and they've got one coat of poly brush on them which is the primer. They need a couple more coats and then they're going to get painted. So right now I am driving north through exciting Gilcrest County, Florida just past the town of Bell, which by the way has Atkins Barbecue, one of the best barbecue places in this part of Florida. Florida doesn't have great barbecue anywhere, but if you're around Bell, Florida, Atkins Barbecue was actually top-notch barbecue for this part of Florida. Uh, I've passed a bunch of dairy farms and goat farms and sod grass farms. And um, For those of you watching these videos, uh, a lot of Florida still looks like this, but I'm on my way up to Live Oak, Suwannee County Airport, where I'm going to meet up with a gentleman. After looking around about how to move the wings, uh, I was originally going to get a trailer, but after talking to my mechanic, he gave me a plan for the way to do them on my truck. So I've got a ladder rack back there. I've got a bunch of foam mattresses from Walmart. I've got some clamps for the leading and trailing reds and some ratchet straps. So hopefully this plan is going to come together and I'm going to get the wings on my truck and get headed back down south and we'll go on with the uh, restoration. So. We'll show a little pictures a little bit later on. I'll be moving the wings and hopefully that'll work out. Good afternoon. Well, it's Matt here again. It's day two. I got the wings moved back down here. As I mentioned yesterday in the truck, I went up to Live Oak, Florida, up in the northern part of the state. Picked up the wings and just this morning delivered them back to my mechanic in Mayaka. Now, my mechanic gave me this idea for how to move the wings when I couldn't find a trailer that I liked. What I did was I bought a couple ladder racks from Harbor Freight, a couple foam mattresses from Walmart, and as you can see here, got the wings up on top and strapped them down with ratchet straps. The guy that I bought the wings from was very nice in helping me do this. It took us about two hours to get them actually up and on the truck. Then I started making my way back down to Mayaka. Uh, I was afraid to go over about 40 miles an hour with the wings up there, so what I did was I came down Highway 41 through such exciting Florida towns as Willingston, Denellen, Floral City, Beverly Hills, Fort White, and High Springs, plus a few that I'd never heard of before. So I got them down to my mechanic this morning and he got a good look at them. Initially, he said they looked great, but after a few minutes, he called me and he said there were some issues with them. Some of the hardware for the ailerons weren't there, so that's going to have to be cannibalized off my other ailerons on my airplane now. There were some issues with a couple pulleys, so they're not as great of a deal as I originally thought, but I'm still going to come out ahead. When I first started looking about getting my wings recovered, my option was to take them off of my airplane and deliver them someplace where they could get recovered and then brought back to my airplane. I was getting quotes between ten dollars and $20,000 to have that done. And it probably was going to be a little more because I know I needed new wingtip bows because mines were bent and probably some other things inside the wings once they opened them up that might have needed attention. These wings that I got here are Wag Aero kits. They are made from a Wag Aero parts catalog. There are any number, probably half a dozen, four or five different at least ways to get parts for a Piper wing. 
You have Wag Arrow, Univer, Spruce, probably a couple other ones. You buy all the parts, you assemble the wing, and then you get it recovered. These are recovered in polyfiber. Polyfiber is one of the three more common ways to fabric an airplane. These processes are all owned by a company called Consolidated Aircraft Systems. You have Polyfiber, Seconite, and Randolph. They're all basically the same system. One type of synthetic polyester fabric. You then treat it with one of varying types of chemicals. You glue it and stitch it onto your metal airframe. And then you heat it, it shrinks up, you're ready for primer and paint. There's not a big difference between the three processes. My cub is originally covered in Seconite. It's probably the older of these three current ones. My, fat, my fuselage is going to stay covered the way it is. It's got a lot of years left in it. So, But these wings are polyfiber. They'll get primered and painted. And then we're going to move the fuselage down and we're going to paint that so it matches. Part of the reason I did my wing restoration this way is I didn't want to lose my airplane for six months while somebody else recovered my wings. What I wanted to do was find a pair and swap out, then I could sell my old wings and recoup some of the cost. That method's still going to work out. I'm going to have to cannibalize some parts off of my wings to put them on my new wings, so I'm not going to get as much out of my old wings as I would have liked, but I'm still going to recoup some of my cost. The other issue is my mechanics hanger is not at the same field where my airplane is. So if I removed my wings and took them off to have them recovered, I then was going to have to move my fuselage without the wings down to the hangar to put it all back together again. This way, I can, when the wings are ready, I can fly my airplane down there. He can swap the wings out, paint the whole airplane, get a couple of other things done, maybe replace the windshield, and I can fly it back and I'll be good to go. I'm getting these painted in my version of Cub Yellow. There's about three different types of Cub Yellow. There's your original pre-war nitrate dope Cub Yellow, which had a bit of an orange tint to it. Then when the war started, that dope was hard to find, so they went to a brighter yellow, kind of a school bus looking yellow. And that's what the ones were during the war. In 46, they went to a new type of paint, which went back to kind of the darker orange and a little bit of a gloss to it. And that's what I'm gonna go with, something like this picture right here. I'm also going to get rid of the end numbers on my airplane and just go with the basic plain uh, cub yellow side with a lightning bolt. Just that. So as we are now, my wings are delivered. It's probably going to be a couple weeks for him to do the work he can do on them there. And then he's going to get to the point where he needs the parts off of my wings, in which case I'll fly my airplane down there. Probably still going to lose the airplane for a couple months because he's got to use my wings to take some parts and then it's gonna take them a while to get my few slides ready to paint. But hopefully, you know, we're going into winter here, it's January, there's not a lot of flying days because it tends to be really windy. I know some of you in other parts of the country where cold is your issue, it doesn't get too cold to fly here, but our winters tend to be very windy. And when it's over 10, 12 knots, it's just not a lot of fun, so I don't do a lot of flying. So hopefully over the next month or two, when I didn't have a lot of flying days left, that's when my airplane will be down. Um, I'll do a few more videos about how this process works and I'll hopefully have some pictures of the wings getting worked on, painted, and hopefully get some pictures of my fuselage being painted. You can kind of follow along. And I know this sounds like a lot of work, a lot of hassle, and it is, but it's a classic airplane. Not an owner, just a caretaker. If you're not down with doing this kind of scavenging and driving around and picking up parts and getting phone calls that say it's going to be an extra $5,000, if you're not okay with that, don't buy an 81-year-old airplane. But in the end, in a couple of months, I should have a nice, shiny, bright, new Cub Yellow looking airplane. Until then, we'll try and keep you updated. Keep flying, and thanks for watching the video.